Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I am here to talk to you about the latest and greatest uh, update to Airflow, Airflow 2.9. Um, so this update was all around kind of improving and adding more functionality to a lot of the data set features, uh, making that new object store functionality just kind of actually more relevant. Um, and then also a ton of different little UI improvements, um, a lot especially centered around um, actually, you know, bringing that data set driven view of data driven scheduling more front and center within the individual DAG view rather than just, you know, only having it kind of sectioned off in that data sets tab. Um, so I'm going to run through kind of all the biggest and most relevant changes to uh, Airflow in 2.6 in this video here today. Um, and hopefully you get inspired to go check out and try some of these in your own use cases. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. And uh, thanks for Tamara Fingerlin, uh, my colleague, for putting this whole uh, repo together. If you search Airflow 2.9 example DAGs, uh, you can find this on the Astronomer um, GitHub repository. So uh, if you want any of the code, I'll link it below. So first thing I want to show off um, is the additional kind of logical operators and conditional expressions that were introduced for data set DAG scheduling. Um, so here, if we have, let's say, toy object uh, upstream data set, you can see here I'm defining a data set uh, and then setting the start date. Actually, this isn't uh, one with a start date. So go back, upstream, conditional data set scheduling, code, just type an output. So you can see outputting a data set here. Apologies, I was looking at the wrong set. Um, but here, so downstream on any. So here you can see the first example. So this will be triggered if any of these data sets are created. So you can see data set one or data set two or data set three. Um, and basically, so you can say instead of, you know, one of these data sets being created, instead, any of these can be created. Um, so this is, you know, makes it easier, let's say the use case where, you know, you have four endpoints that you're monitoring, any time a file is produced for any of those endpoints, you want to consume that file. Uh, this allows you to condense that into one DAG that is triggered off of any of these rather than needing to have kind of four DAGs as you would have needed to before. Um, and then you can see, so downstream two, one in each group. So this is, hey, let's say actually data set one or data set two in group one and data set three and data set four. So you can see here kind of a more complex example uh, saying using both the and and or operators to uh, just kind of illustrate, you know, you now have additional flexibility in how you define those downstream triggers based on your data sets. Um, so if we go there, uh, load in the snowflake, additional here. So what this will do, um, as you know, an example is you have these three different stages uh, within S3 buckets. And then what you can do here is say, hey, schedule based on those three different data sets, um, actually take whatever uh, data set was created and then upload it into Snowflake and load that file. Um, you can see that all happening here. So opens up a lot of new possibilities kind of with, uh, you know, DAG scheduling based on data set creation or updates. You can actually see that Piglet AKA the data dog uh, helped out with writing this tag. Um, and then one other thing I want to show you on the topic of data set scheduling is you also have the option to say uh, now, not just based on a data set, but also have a timetable that you're using or you know, a regular schedule that you're using. Um, so this can be useful if you, know, you have a data or a fail safe that, hey, you want to do this process once a day, uh, but if a data set is created uh, ahead of the scheduled time, you'd rather that that runs twice a day, let's say. Um, this is an example of that where you have you know, a timetable that can run as a fail safe if there isn't a data set uh, trigger event on that uh, actual data set that you're monitoring. So uh, kind of cool to just have that option to mix and match. So now you're not stuck using one or the other here. And also in tandem with all these data set upgrades, there's also a new addition uh, to the Airflow API. So now you have uh, different API endpoints uh, on the Airflow API for actually getting events around a data set update. So getting data set events, getting queued, deleting, um, updating, creating, so just allowing you to programmatically manage those um, and just kind of making data sets a more you know, first class citizen within the uh, Airflow ecosystem there. So glad to see that happen because I'm personally a huge uh, data set fan. Then going back to the Airflow UI, so additionally, if we look at this graph now too, uh, so number one, you'll notice that you don't longer have that top bar. Now everything is condensed in this one screen, so there's no more switching between screens when you're in the DAG view. So I can go from Gantt to, so if I uh, run this DAG, um, and then I can go to the Gantt chart for each DAG run. Um, I can look at the code, audit log, run duration, counter, all within the same uh, view. So just kind of nice quality of life. 
And then here you can also see the data sets that are upstream of uh, this DAG. So you can see just kind of nicely visualized here rather than for needing to either go into the code or look at the scheduled data set um, where it doesn't actually say what the data set is. It's just still needs to get worked in here a little bit. Um, but now you just have that nice, easy to monitor view um, of having those data sets visualized within the graph view. Um, and then you also, on the data sets view, there's some updates here. <laughs> you can see this is quite a data sets uh, centric uh, repo. Um, but now you can filter for not only DAGs, but or data sets. Um, so here, you know, if I want to filter just for complex DAG rainbow, um, or just want to look at, let me see, let's pick a data set that's using data set zero, um, and just filter just for that particular data set. Um, and we'll go back to see all data sets. And you can also, if you create a data, uh, you have a data set here, you can manually trigger a data set update event. So if I hit this play button, manually create event, this will act as if it triggered. So really good for testing. If you just want to manually trigger something, you don't want to have to bother like actually running the upstream DAG or processing the data. Now you can just trigger that data set event. So easier to test that the trigger works or you know just testing that downstream DAG and that link is there. Uh, so super useful stuff there. Um, and just, you know, again, nice improvements to the Airflow uh, UI in terms of data sets. Now, another big UI upgrade has been the addition of custom names for map tasks. So now gone are the days of needing to actually have every map task and just view 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you can actually have map task names. Um, so you can see here this map index. And if we go and look at the code, what this will do here is we have this listed dictionary. Um, if we go to bash command uh, map index template, so this is the template for changing the name, uh, task environment name, uh, and then amount of sugar, and kind of building that string there dynamically. So super nice to finally have this feature. <laughs> um, so you don't have to just rely on looking at map indexes, because um, I can't tell you how much time I've just had to go click through every single map task just to figure out which one is the right one. Um, and then you can also you know, manually set this, but basically just using this task environment name and then passed it that environment get uh, fruits objects. Um, so super useful, super cool, little uh, quality of life change. Um, just, you know, making the Airflow UI, just kind of bringing it in the 21st century, you know, getting us back into, you know, something that is, is human readable rather than you need to decipher all that fun Airflow specific terminology. Um, Next, we have the addition of object storage as an XCOM backend. So this is if you want to use something like an S3 bucket um, as your XCOM storage backend, making it easier to save things like objects. Um, so in your configuration file, set your XCOM storage pathway to your S3 bucket. Obviously, you're going to and then set your XCOM backend to the new XCOM object store backend. Um, and so if you look in the code here, can kind of see an example of what this looks like. Snowflake, I mean, this is just uh, triggering based off of Snowflake table. Um, but what this will do, or what's happening within this uh, DAG, is there's actually uh, objects being passed through and saved um, as XCOMs. So you can see these returns um, and just making it easier to, if I go to this graph, I don't know if it's going to show me the XCOMs properly because I haven't set this up. Um, but essentially what this is doing here is, is, you know, passing the embedding. It just makes it easier to pass larger objects um, through XCOMs. I don't have the Snowflake connection set up, so I can't set you there, but uh, just, you know, new method of saving and passing data between tasks is giving you additional fl flexibility on it, how you want to do that with your airflow environment. Um, and then another just kind of cool little fun feature is we have the new ability to have emojis and set a display name uh, for DAGs and tasks. Um, and this can actually be separate from the DAG ID. And so what you'll do if we look at the code here, and also you have these nice little new DAG, I, I did something to the task, task views. Um, it does look nice and different. Um, but here, if I go into your DAG display name, you can set a different DAG display name from whatever the DAG is actually called. So you can see here, DAG is really called Complex DAG Structure Rainbow. It initializes that, but because we have this DAG display name, it uh, initial, or shows up in the UI as Rainbow uh, Roger Boge DAG, and I'm sure I butchered that, um, but now you can just you know include non-ASIC characters, um, and obviously DAG ID is still only alphanumeric characters, dashes, dots, and underscores, but you can have a little more fun with your DAG display name um, if you are allowed to do that. Um, you know, so pretty cool stuff. Um, 
And then just, I guess, kind of on the, uh, oh, one thing, so this new run duration, this replaces the landing time. So just a more logical uh, name for you know, what it should be. You can do landing time too, but you know, I, I, I don't know, just something, I guess, kind of quality of life and like how you're looking at the times because people, it's the number one thing I hear when people getting uh, used to airflow is like, hey, it's really annoying um, how you guys do, you know, the whole uh, s execution date and, and scheduling. It's just, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I digress. Um, so now also uh, one other thing within um, your tasks you have, and this is still running, so I won't show that, but if I go into one of these that has run tasks, um, and look at some logs, so sales day transform, you'll now see you have these task groups. So post-task execution logs, pre-task execution logs. Um, so you can just, you know, it makes it easier to, instead of just having a wall of text, you can kind of fold and unfold uh, different segments of the text as you need. Um, so again, nice little UI improvement. It's kind of in keeping with, uh, you know, having all these nice little UI improvements uh, with, with, with this Airflow 2.9 update, you know, setting us up nice solid base for Airflow 3.0 coming soon. Um, and then just some other new features, just kind of reading them off a checklist, uh, all create, update, delete actions in the REST API are now recorded in the audit log. There's a new on skipped callback. So if a DAG or task is skipped, then you can trigger downstream action based off of that. Um, auto, auto pause DAGs after n number of consecutive failures. So if you know, something fails three times, pause that DAG. Uh, Matomo as a data analytics tool, there is the task bash task flow decorator for decorating bash commands. Um, and now Airflow task tests works with the Furball operators. Um, but overall, bit, you know, nice new Airflow 2.9 release. Happy to see the cadence of Airflow continuing um, to improve and just you know, always having new features to talk about and get excited about. Um, so I hope you have uh, found this video helpful. I hope you enjoy the new upgrades and uh, hope you test it out uh, soon. So have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.